This is Mr. Anderson for Kella Community College. In our final video, going over possible problems that could be on our uh, test for uh, for chapters 3 and 4 in Intermediate Algebra, we're going to be looking at our last page here, including the story problems at the very end. We're going to start off today with uh, this one, finding the domain of the following function. Now, all uh, it is a, it is a rule that there can n there the square roots have to be positive. Actually, even roots have to have a domain greater than or equal to zero. So this um, f of x, hold on, this square root of x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to zero. So what this means is that we should look at all situations where x minus 5 is greater than or equal to zero, and this tells me that my x has to be greater than or equal to 5. So to solve these problems, since square roots have to be greater than or equal to 0, um, you would set whatever is inside um, greater than or equal to 0 and solve for x. So my notation here is going to be x has to be greater than or equal to 5, like so. Um, for the next two problems, we're going to look at uh, different shading um, and different techniques for that. And uh, let's go take a look here. We have a situation where We've got three graphs. Now, luckily, all these graphs are set up in y equals mx plus b form, or they are vertical or horizontal lines. So the first equation, what we'll do is we'll set this up. The y-intercept is negative 3, and the slope is 1 over 1. So it's going to move up 1 and over 1, up 1 and over 1, so on and so forth here. Now, what this means here is that this is a solid line because it's greater than or equal to. So let's put a solid line like that. Okay, and there you go. Now, in terms of shading, since it's greater than or equal to, we're going to shade above this line, so it's going to get shaded like this. All right, now, the next graph is going to be uh, y is less than or equal to negative x plus 4. Let me change colors here so you can see the uh, different lines. So this is going to start off at 4. The slope is down 1 over 1, so down 1 over 1 down 1 over 1, and this is less than or equal to, so this is another solid line going down 1 over 1, and since it's less than, we'll be shading in the downward direction like so. Now you'll notice that it goes below the dark blue line, but so far this inner region here seems to be the intersection of those two shaded planes. Now this last marker right there is going to be where we have y is greater than or equal to negative 3. Now that right there is a horizontal line at negative 3. Now it's going to be a dotted line because it's greater than or equal to, and this is going to be shaded above. So we're going to go above this. Now this does go you know, above all parts of the green line there, but you see that this, this area here, bounded by all three regions, this is our solution plane, where, all, where any dot with inside this really dark this green scribbled area here to this you know point where the two meet will satisfy all three conditions. Let's go over and take a look at this one here. Let me go change colors again. This is going to be a um, x is less than three, so this is a uh, this is a uh, vertical line, and it's a vertical line that goes down like this. It's a dotted line, and it's a dotted line because it's less than 3, so this is going to be shaded in this direction, like so. Um, we're going to move to our next line, so let's choose a different color here. Let's go to, let's see, I'm going to go 4, and it's going to go down 2, 1, 2, and over 3, 1, 2, 3. Down 2, 1, 2, and then over 3. It's going to be actually around here at 6. Now this is another dotted line, and it's a dotted line because it's less than, not less than or equal to, and since it's less than, we're going to shade it down like so. Finally, the last graph here, let me change my color again from purple to red. Let's see, and then this is going to start at negative 3, and it's going to go up 1 over 4, like so, or down 1 and left 4, and this is going to be another dotted line. And this is going to be shaded up, like so. Now, the, 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 the region that's bounded by all three lines 
follows this yellow line that goes down here. So this this is the region that I would shade more dark, but make sure it doesn't go past three here because that's where the yellow sector section uh, began. So I know this is a little messy, and if I uh, change colors here to show you that, well, it'd be this black section, it would be kind of like in this black area, that's the part that'd be shaded the darkest. And over here in this black area, this is where this would be shaded the darkest. Okay, so let's move back to our normal blue color pen and go to the, the story problems here. Okay, so our story problems are, are very similar. Uh, they actually, uh, the numbers have been changed uh, slightly, but they really do have the same kind of setup here. So what this says is you have 50 pounds of mixed jelly candies, mixed candy sells for $7.40 a pound. The mixture is obtained from two kinds of candy, Jolly Ranchers priced at $6.50 a pound and Skittles at $8 a pound. How many pounds of each are used in the mixture? Now, what we need to do is set up a system of equations, and the system is going to be based on two different things. You're going to have your total um, equation, and you're also going to have your cost equation. Your total equation is that we need X amount of uh, Jolly Ranchers and Y amount of Skittles, so we'll just put JR for Jolly Ranchers and SK for Skittles, and that's going to make a total of 50 pounds. Now we're going to deal with the cost, though. Now the cost is going to be how much the Jolly Ranchers cost per pound, so this is going to be $6.50 per pound, plus um, this is going to be the Skittles, which is $8 per pound, and then that is going to give you a total of your $7.40 times your 50 pounds. Um, a lot of times people leave off the 50 times the 740 right there. That's a common mistake. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're going to add these up. Um, after we try to see if there's something we can, you know, multiply the top line by so we can get either the X's or the Y's to cancel out. So the question becomes is like, well, what do I want to um, multiply the top line by to get to cancel out? And I think probably be best to multiply the top line by negative 8. Now if I do that and multiply this top line by negative 8, then what's going to happen is my y's going to cancel out and I can solve for my Jolly Ranchers. So you'll notice that I do this all in one step up there because that's going to give me an easy answer to this problem. Now this right here, eight dollar or the negative eight plus the six point five is going to give me a negative one point five x. The y's will simplify, and this right here, negative eight times fifty is going to be negative four hundred, and seven dollars and forty cents times fifty here is going to be uh, positive three hundred and seventy, and if I put these together, I get negative thirty. And so my next step is going to be to divide the negative 1.5 by the 30. And this is going to tell me x, or how much um, I'll have in terms of my uh, Jolly Ranchers. And so how many times does 1.5 go into 30? And the answer to that is 20. So my answer for x is 20, and I want you to qualify this as 20 pounds of Jolly Ranchers. And I really need you to write your answer in, in with, with the context of the problem because if you just leave it as x equals 20, I'm not really sure unless you labeled it in the problem or whether you're talking about the Skittles or the Jolly Ranchers. Now to find my y, it's pretty easy. Since I know I have 50 pounds of um, both candies, then it would be 20 pounds of one and 30 pounds of the other. And that will give me my total 50 pounds. And uh, just as a disclaimer, I'm not really sure if these prices are accurate. I was just using some, um, you know, take it as free advertising, folks. I don't really want to weigh in on which is better or worse. Now, this down here is pretty much the same things. So we're going to have, um, except in this problem, I will say, unlike most of your other problems, you will have a pretty easy decimal to deal with here. So I'm going to get out my calculator just to work on this a little bit. So I've got 18 pounds of mixed candy that sells for $15 a pound. So that's, I know right now I'm going to have X plus Y equals 18. And down here I'm going to have some X and Y equals 18 times $15 a pound. So I'm going to have these two multiplied by each other. So let's see what we're talking about here. We're talking about Hershey's chocolate, and it's priced at $16 a pound. So that's 16X. And then we have Milky Way candy bars. 
and those are priced at $12 a pound, so 12Y. So now what I need to do is multiply my top line by something so I can get my X's or Y's to simplify. Um, let's, uh, let's, for a change, let's multiply the top line by negative 16. Let's uh, solve for the Milky Ways. So this is negative 16 times Y, and this is going to be negative 16. All right, so what we have here is the 16's are going to simplify. 16 X's are going to go away. Simplify to 0. The negative 16 Y and the 12 Y is going to be negative 4 Y. And here, if I've got 18, um, this is going to give me a, a easy difference of 18, but if I go, if I multiply this out, I'm going to have negative 288. I multiply this out, I'm going to have 270. And I could tell that my difference is going to be 18 between the two of these because this is 16 and 15. But anyway, just kind of running the numbers through, this is going to be a negative um, 18. And I said this is going to give me some decimals, but they're going to be easy decimals. Because I'm going to find out I'm going to need 18 divided by 4 here, and that's going to give me 4.5 pounds of Milky Way candy bars. So 4.5 pounds of Milky Way. Now, to find out how many pounds of Hershey's chocolate, all I need to do is subtract the 4.5 from the 18, and so my x is going to be 13.5 pounds of Hershey's candy bar. And that's how you'd solve the um, story problems. You'll have one of these on the test and also a tougher one for maybe some bonus points, but that should get you set, and please, I would encourage you to go and do all of your homework practice the, the practice test multiple times, and also try problems that um, have different symbols like less than or greater than so we can get some and or or practice in. All right, well, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, just send me an email.